Well, good day, tubes. Morning, and welcome to really, really early. Why is it really, really early? Well, you can almost see the sun starting to come up behind me there to the east. Uh, today, we're going on a little bit of a road trip, and we need to leave early. So that's, yeah, <laughs> that's why. But today, we're actually going up to the Bala Cranberry Festival again. I think we did that last year, the year before. When we got a helicopter ride. It was pretty cool. Hopefully, it's a nicer day. Last year, we went. I didn't even film anything because it was just peeing down rain all day. So hopefully, today's a little better. And anyways, I got my truck running, and then I got to go get some gas and stuff. And then get the troops in the truck, and we should be on our way. But anyways, well, let's go get some gas. Oh, <laughs> that is cool. Oh, that is cool. Oh, man, look at this crap on my window. <laughs> Ah, uh, she's melting though. Slowly but surely she's melting it. Uh, frozen dew, or frost they call that. Oh, that's no fun. Huh. Well, she's quite a ghost town this time of morning. Sunday morning's bright and early, there's one car out. <laughs> Me and him, that's it. We'll take a little tour up the main drag here, maybe, and uh, have a see uh, who's where doing what. So, probably not too much, most likely. It's pretty quiet this time of morning, but give her, uh, give her a couple hours, 9 o'clock-ish, you'll be uh, Zoo City. So, one guy in at the Tim Hortons there, but um, that's about it. Early bird. Yeah, looks like they're all ready to rock. Holy hell. Nobody at the gas station. 94.9 up here. Really? Last night we were down in the city. I actually went down to a place for dinner where I tried duck. Yes, I did. I don't know what kind of duck it was. It might have been Donald Duck for all I know. Anyways, I tried duck. It was pretty good. Um, but down there, the gas was like 89.5. Like, that guy's 94? Holy crap, bud. Like, come on. Get with the prices. Uh, maybe it's gone up overnight, I don't know. But uh, anyways, uh, she's pretty quiet out here. <laughs> I wish it was like this all the time. You kind of wouldn't have to be driving so kind of, so defensively all the time, you know. Be nice to be able to just uh, whip down here and nobody here looks like this. Oh, it'd be awesome. These, these roads are just jammed all the time. Sometimes like right here, you're stopped for this light up here. And it's just stupid. 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 Uh, anyways, um, this is coming up to the road called Broadway. And at one time it used to be very broad, as in wide, not lady. That's not nice. Um, and now they've put all this stupid crap down the center of the road. Now it's, you know, dumb. And like try to get a fire truck down here when you have to. Good friggin' luck. Show you that crap in a second here, unless I have before. I can't remember now. Lights are awesome, they change right away. They're not, you know, getting distracted by people pushing buttons and stuff. But yeah, this used to be a nice, big, wide street here, and then they put all this stupid freaking concrete work and crap in this great, big, huge, ugly looking fountain thing right in the way here, too, you know. So that made that like good luck trying to get fire trucks down here right now, you know. Like, well, not right now, it'll be all right, but like, holy crap. It's all stupid, so this is our this is our main street though, main drag street. And then they put this crazy stupid clock tower on that's usual usually half half uh, halfway wrong. So and then another big thing right here, like oh, it's so stupid now, because if you're standing here for a parade, the parade's going up the other side and you're standing up here you can't see nothing. Things like that, you know. It's like really cost the town, like that little bit of concretey work and stuff and the gardening stuff we've seen there. Cost them like 34 million dollars, I think it was, to put it in. <laughs> it's like, really? And of course, you know, that got kind of done. Oh, don't tell anybody until, you know, we start working on it, and then they'll be like, what's going on? And we're like, oh, we're not quite sure yet. And, blah, blah. and they kept it right under the radar, right? Wow, it's 94 9 here, too, at the station I normally go to. Kept it right under the radar, so everybody got in a huge uproar over it, you know, because, you know, none of that was actually sort of passed through council. It was just kind of sort of. You know, done. They did get some money from the from the province of Ontario for it, infrastructure-y kind of stuff. But uh, I think like 15 million of it come from the town pay taxpayers. So I don't think that went over too well when nobody really knew about it. 
So here is our gas station that we go to, and I, because this thing is a EcoBoost diesel, I got to put the uh, the 93 octane in there. She doesn't burn quite as dirty, and it's better on the turbos, right? So well, there we go. Okay, let's fill her up. See how much she'll take today. We are down to about there, so this is gonna suck. Well. Not quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm thinking I'll be well over 100. But it actually clicked off at about 97 in a bit. So I squeezed into 99. 86.926 liters. So well, that's enough. But that's at the dollar uh, 13 a liter. Funny enough though, this thing's never been on with the pumps. So I don't know if the truck's not reading right or if the pump's screwing us. Because it says here that I used 82.4 liters last time I filled. Well, I put in 86.9. Whoops, sorry. Whoa, 86.9. So, I mean, it's not off a lot, but that's, you know, four liters. So, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, let's uh, do a reset. Put jing on that. And I do a reset on my fuel economy. 13.3 liters per 100. It's not too bad. Oh, 99, oh, because it doesn't know yet. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I think we're good to go. Let's get the troops in the, in the bus here and uh, hit her out. Okay, so here is our trekking route. I might not exactly follow the way they're going because they're taking it way out and around. I'll go in other ways, but uh, it doesn't look very far on here, but uh, two hours and nine minutes <laughs> all the way up to here. Now, if it was a straight line, it'd be like, you know, probably about 20 minutes, but anyways. Some lakes and stuff through Barry and Orangeville. It doesn't look very far, but from Orangeville to the turn here is like 30 minutes, something like that. So, yeah, kind of sucks. But anyways, lots of nice lakes up here. Pretty sweet. All right, this is our finally road. It's a long go way. Go home, Lake Road, Bella. Bella. Blah, and this is Mohar, Mohark, Mohawk Territory, Indian. So there'll be a lot of these joints along here that uh, sell us the Indian cigarettes and stuff. And uh, some pretty run-down, ratty-looking old places, that's for sure. So uh, hopefully we can catch a few of them on the way past. They're kind of kind of scary-looking places. Some of the old, uh, their old motor homes and stuff, they're just run right down to the ground, nothing left of them. And they're still selling smokes. Smokes. So, Wata Mohawk Territory, Bala's 18 kilometers. There you go. Welcome to Wata. Wata. So, we gotta watch we don't get scalped. We've already seen a dead black bear on the side of the road. Looked like he got like smushed in the middle of the road and then pfft, slid her to the to the side. So that's kind of pretty nasty. It looks like it wasn't a full size one, but probably a hundred pounds anyways. A couple hundred pounds maybe, I don't know. But, I have a nice bearskin rug. We might see bear in here somewhere. I wouldn't doubt it. We're up pretty far here. Far enough where the, like a great big uh, Canadian shield rocks and stuff are coming up out of the ground and stuff, you know. So, Sago Brown's brand sold here. There you go. It's first small place. Mohawk Longhouse. Stupid sun. Can't see through the sun. I'll watch your snakes. 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 North Hi. Gibson Trail. Oh, that's definitely an Indian name, I would say. Trail and Gibson. Not road. Uh, I don't know. Made it something. Nothing. What a convenience. Seven. Okay. Gas. Bakery convenience. Maybe they're all closed up. Sago Brands. What a deal. Okay. First, I got some like right behind me. You can see the big rocks. 
coming out. See if I can get you some better shots up here with some rocks. The old rocks. I'm just going to keep filming here because these things come up really fast here. And uh, firewood for sale, but there's no firewood there. Butt shop. Huh? I think they had a picture of someone's butt. Well. Yeah, that's weird. I can see scalp shop. But <laughs> it's kind of funny though, they're all selling smokes up here, you know, stuff like that. Because like, wouldn't there be like a lot of competition? Like there's another place here, looks like. It says open. Pickerel and moose pie. Oh boy. And smokes. <laughs> and smokes. <laughs> Not cigarettes. Smokes. That's definitely Indian too in this industry. Let's go have smoke. Let's go have smoke. Moose and pickerel pie. Oh gosh. I don't think that really. Uh, I don't know. Oh, chief smokes. There's a little shack for you. Chief smokes. Oh. Sorry. The light's really screwy and it's kind of making everything look screwy. Chief smokes. That's his name. Probably the probably the brand. That's what the chief smokes, so they gotta be the best, right? That little church there. Nobody at it. Wata drive through smoke shop. <laughs> there, somewhere. Duty paid smokes. Wow. None of those cigarettes aren't good for you. Like, there's a big smoke craft shop. Literally shed there. <laughs> Takes visa though. Holy jumping. Oh, here comes another one. Wata station. Mrs. H. Fish and Chips. Cranberry product here. Where we're going. Oh, shack 11, whatever that means. I know you guys probably can't see these signs, why I'm reading them off to you. It comes by too fast. I don't think the camera picks them up too well. It could go slower. I can just got this freaking person like right behind me. She needs her smokes. Rolled up in birch bark. Just let her go fast. You can't pass on this road, you know, getting killed. I'm gonna have a funeral on Wednesday. Not up here. Jeez, dynamite a hole out of the rock. There's some rocks for you. Rock Central. We got all this rock in Canada like this, and none of it is apparently any good for doing monuments, like cemetery monuments or anything like that, because it's all full of holes and air pockets and fissures and stuff. There's no, they're no good. Oh, gas and smokes maybe. Probably smokes too. Golden leaf, soft packs, whatever that means. Yeah, I should have probably pulled over there and let that lady pass me because she's like pretty much right in our tailgate. Trying to get a free ride off my tailgate. Twelve kilometers here. Sago brands, another one, Sago. Or they make all their cigarettes right here. I mean, they sure sell a lot of them. Probably get a whole bag of them for like six bucks. Crazy. Some nice leaves up here too. They're starting to fall, but some of them on the way up were really nice colors and stuff. Not too much. So much. Blah, 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 blah. Not so much here. I was kind of trying to do so much and too much all at once. Didn't work. Aw, oh, dude. Like dude. Where did he come? Oh, driveway. Driveway. It's 1900. I don't know why I'm filming these little smoke shops. It's just they're so funny. Like tiny little wee joints. Smokes. <laughs> Well, there's one there for you. Rockin' Robin something fries. Oh, what a nightmare. <laughs> what a nightmare. Snapping turtle crossing. Oh, it's a swamp. They're swamp. Pretty high swamp. Our road's getting lower. 
That's not good. Some pretty nice scenery out here though. Big rocks, nice trees, black bears and smokes. No moose yet. No moose out here, I don't think. Maybe not quite north enough yet. Nord, not quite nord enough. Oh, he's going for smokes and fireworks. Sweet! Pizza. Sweet fireworks. That's a fairly nice establishment. That one more Sago brand too though. And they got cigars too. Cigars. Maybe that's what the Sago are. Cigars. I'm sure somebody will let me know. So they put up a permanent bump sign right here. Why wouldn't they just fix it? Oh, yeah, there's a bump there. <laughs> Um, why, why wouldn't you just fix it? It looks like they did. <laughs> Didn't fix her very good. But anyways, maybe they made her made her bumpy like that and then eventually it'll down and it'll be good. Well, we got a no daytime burning fire ban. Moderate right now up here. Very so interesting. Burn at nighttime so we don't see it. Well, I guess at nighttime you gotta keep warm, right? In the daytime you can whatever in the sun free heat in the sun when it's minus 50 outside it's not minus warm minus. it's one degree celsius right now up here pretty cold we got a little bit yet to go to so 8.2 kilometers yet before we there oh Can't remember now if there's many more smoke shops after where we just passed here. I think that might be almost it. Well, I guess there's nothing else to do except smoke and, you know, shoot things up here. Some more big rocks coming up. Sweet. Shoot it with the shotgun, chopper woods. Some big rocks. They had to chop all these out here. We're going through a, a rock tunnel y thing right now here that they had to chop out to put the road through. There's some nice leaves. They're actually further down up here, it looks like. Nice lake in there, too. You can see any of it. See, there's, there's lots of room in there for more cottages. Like, we could put a cottage in there, but how do you cottage in there. There's a road there, but I don't know. There's like tons of room up here, but it's all owned by the Indians and they probably don't want to give it up to you. Would you? Well, no, but how many acres do they really think they need? Holy John. When you give a little bit and someone's got a whole condo and everything coming in. Oh, well, I can see that, but you probably have to be Indian up here to get any land up here. I would imagine. Well, I guess we'll shut the camera down for now until we start coming into Voila. Okay, we finally made her to Bala. This is Cranberry, capital of Ontario. Bala, Bala. It's not a very big town, but it's kind of cool. Holy friggin' crap, they're already parking down here. Man. I guess so. Maybe that's where we should have parked and walked up, maybe. Oh, there's the buses. Take you to the cranberry thing, or you could drive and park there, which I'll probably do. Oh, oh crap. Better put it away. Well, I don't $10. really... How much? Ten bucks. Ten bucks to park in there? Are you freaking crazy? Holy crap. Anyways, some nice areas and stuff in here and stuff. And stuff, you know. Could fly that. I did bring the helicopter. Oh, that's oh, nice that's in there. Pretty. Could fly down there too. Uh, yeah, I did bring the helicopter to uh, maybe do a freaking flight Fridays for you. Be kind of sweet. Uh, I don't know exactly where. I kind of just sort of thinking more at the cranberry fields than really it's a true town here. I don't really kind of like the idea of that too too much. But holy cow, you got vendors down here now. Well, if you find a spot where we can jam her. <laughs> Cranberry wagon. 
Blech. Cranberries are yummy. Oh, sure. Why didn't you have some with your turkey? I did in my muffin this morning. With a bunch of sugar around it. Sugar's good for you. Um, lots of vendors open everywhere here today. Oh, and the LCBO keeps their lot closed. Of course. Grub heads. How can you put on a festival here, charge people to park, but then cut off all your parking lots? <laughs> what a scam. Oh man, everybody's charging to park. What are you doing? Waving. Okay, but farmer's market today too. Okay. It's all free parking along the side here, but it'll be it's long fun. gone. We parked down there last time, didn't we? I can't remember now. It's an old lumber yard or something down in there. You're gonna bust me. Here, you hold. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a lady cop. She's funny. Oh, park that right makes a difference? The, park right in front of the crappers. Well, line up here for in town shuttle buses. In town shuttle buses, really? Fire hydrant can't park there. No, last year we parked down here more time. Like, no parking. Last year we parked in the fairground. And then got the bus in? No. no parking. Like, really? No parking, no parking, no parking. Go out to the fields and get the bus in. Go out to the fields and get the bus in. Yeah, because last year yeah. we parked out on the field. Get the bus back into town. Yep. So we did. Yeah. Well, we yeah. parked here and went into the fields. We parked at the festival. Yeah, we parked at the festival and came here. Oh, we're in hot pursuit of this school bus. Hey, the road's in much better shape. Than yeah, they must have chewed her up and spat her out, it looks like again. Well, there's some dried up looking fields down there. Are they sprinkling oh, water on them? I don't know, we'll look at that after that. Down in here, though, it's all white. Oh, it's frost. <laughs> oh no, they're spraying water and it's freezing. Making ice cubes. Uh, oh. uh probably to keep the berries from freezing. I think that's what that idea is. So we gotta go find a spot now. They're flying their big helicopter in here today, giving rides. Now, they're also spraying a bunch of water on the fields, I think to keep the berries from freezing. Um, so that's maybe not too good for me flying my thing, but maybe if I zip down to the other, the other end there, we'll, uh, does she want to talk to me too? Really? Probably. Holy cow, I just need a parking spot, people. For freak's sakes, leave me alone. I know where I'm going. I am from the city, but I've been here before. So they got two helicopters here, I think. Mommy, you're coming up with us this time. I'm I don't going think we're going, going up, Dale. We were, yeah, there's one there, spooling up or spooling down, and this guy just landed here. So interesting. I don't understand, but anyway, so here we go. Well, unfortunately, I think that they're already done their harvest out here, which kind of sucks. I don't really know why they're spreading this stuff on it, but uh, I, I don't know. We won't know until we get to see the berries, maybe. Maybe that's just to keep it from freezing up, but it looks like it's freezing up more than anything to me. Holy. This guy's just shutting down too, so that's maybe a good thing. And then this guy's shut down as well, so maybe I can get up with mine right now. Oh, sure. We get way the frick over here, and he starts that thing up again. To take off. Take off, eh? Man. I don't know. Whatever. We're gonna go look at some fields here and I'm gonna try to do a bit of a a video for flying Fridays. That's not a turbo nothing over there, it's just a regular engine in that helicopter. It just sounds kinda of horrible. But anyways, it looks like they've pretty much finished their their harvest. I think yeah, they got a little sampley thing over here, but look there's leftovers, Dilly. But you don't fall in there, that's really deep really fast. 
they flutter so all the berries float up and then their harvest guys here can chew them off and suck them up because they float, right? Anyways, let's head over here. Oh, he's firing it up. Going for a quick ride. See if we can catch him taking off here. He's warming her up again. Fire it up! Turn the dewy so you go up. I think the guy that came in in this big one over here just jumped in with this one and this guy here. And they're going for a little tour. Maybe he's letting them try it out or something. They are doing rides here maybe today because that is the truck and the trailer for it unless it's just got their fuel in there but I bet you they are. I don't feel like going for riding one of those today. I got my own. <laughs> Way they go. If they take off and go that way that's all right because I can do it over here behind us. That's right. Oh look at this an old John Deere pumping water. harvested them yet I don't really I think they're trying to keep the plants from dying I think that's the idea but yeah there's still berries on these ones we can see any of those little red things are the berries there so I, I kind of don't think they've actually harvested these yet but why they're freezing them up like that I don't know maybe that helps keep the plant from freezing but that looks pretty darn cold to me I don't know weird so oh, there is quite a few acres of field up here. Um, I did a rough measurement on Google Earth and from the start of their fields up to about here to the other far end here was about half a kilometer, I think they, they sort of went at roughly. So that's kind of cool. We'll get uh, hopefully some heli of that. I'm probably gonna get in trouble though <laughs> if the guys see it. I'll just have to be very, very wary of where they are with their machines and where they're coming in and stuff and I you know I'll probably stay down below the tree lines and stuff here I just don't want to get low enough to get nailed with the water kind of wasn't expecting them to be doing that today but anyways I still don't know why they're doing that something I guess to keep them from freezing I don't know I know they do that like down in uh, Florida and stuff if it's getting really cold they'll spray the oranges with water like that and it keeps them from freezing but uh, it looks to me like that stuff's freezing too that stuff so I don't know, maybe there's something behind it. Maybe the ice is better on it than the, the actual frost hitting it. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to maybe jump on the tractor with the instructory guy there and see what he says. But it looks like that other pond over there is flooded though. One, one, two, third over. So hopefully we can see that from the air. Now, the only problem is I'm not on the right road to be doing this because this is where they're going to be bringing their tractor tours down here, so that's, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to get up here or not because he, oh, he's coming down here now. <laughs> well, that's not good. Not a whole lot of room here. Not a whole lot of room here. Oh, crap. Well, we'll figure it out when we get run over, I guess. there before maybe there's a little bit of an east to west wind I think here too I think that's east anyways and mist mist put her down and shut her off but I'll get up for 18 minutes and then I don't even need that much a couple of flies around that's all I'm gonna get here probably but uh, oh he's going back up anyways we're walking here we're walking Through the mist. Helicopter through the mist. Put her down, bud. Are you ready? I'm very cautious. That's good, though. Oh, cap. Sorry. Anyways. Ah, oh, 
Well, we found the source of the water. A watery fall. That's kind of cool. Let's see where this goes. Probably not supposed to be up here, but hey, no one is here to tell us no. No, crub head. Don't do that. That's pretty cool. It's coming down like natural rock too, eh? That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. You could have like a natural water slide there, Dill. Go try it. Okay. You try first. I'll try second. Oh, and you get like a nice drop off right to the boom at the bottom here. And you know where you'd get her. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> That's pretty cool though. That'd be really slippery too, I bet. It looks like it comes down there quite a bit. Let's, let's just keep, keep peeking up here and see where we go. This is pretty cool. Maybe I'd be better flying around up here or something. Maybe. Well, there's a trail there and a trail here. Let's keep following the trail and see where we end up. Looks like something else over here. Maybe more cranberry fields, I don't know. I have no idea, I've never been up this far before. The helicopter's still running. I can hear them. Oh, railway guys. That's why we can hear the What are they doing? They got a school bus on rails. Are you freaking kidding me? Is huh. What they're hiding from us? A school bus with railway things. Look, they're jacked up off the trails and everything. That is freaking cool. And they'll use the back for drive, yep. Yeah. Holy crap. What? They must be replacing rails or something over here. Oh, there is a bit of a lake though. That's kind of cool. And I'm out of breath, out of shape. That's not good. Let's just get one more look at all these fellers over here. I guess they're rail replacement things. Tie replacements, probably fire in the spikes. And there's a lot of, a lot of money sitting here. This is a pretty active uh, railway here though, just as we got here. Holy cow, they're still going with machineries. Still going with machineries. Holy crap, how much do you think you need? Still going, still going. And I'm pretty much out of view. <laughs> wow, it's a big production, I guess. Machine gun helicopter. Cranberry thingy, conveyor thingy. I guess they get them all pushed down to the corner and they just get sucked up to the, the top of the dewey here and then, you know, catches the odd, the odd straggling dewey. And I'm not going much further because that gets really deep really fast. But uh, presume up they go. Dunk, 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 into their trailer or their truck or something. It's a pretty uh, simple design. Drives off of there for a chain up to the thing at the top, drags the thingy. There you go. Oh, I got two helicopters in the air now. I, I just about had it ready to go up and then the other guy started up and took off. I'm like, ah, oh, this guy's coming back in again now. So uh, I better not put it in the air here. I guess they probably wouldn't like that too much. Uh, but anyways, you know, I can I can visually see where they are and steer way clear of them, but uh, still this is a risk factor, right? So uh, but anyways, here we're looking at one of the ponds. That's well, really well flooded now. Um, some of the berries are floating, but some are they're still attached to the plant, right? They got to go through with the machine to, to, to plow them, beat them all up, and then they'll all float up, and then they can get them all pushed to where everybody is over there, and then they into the back of the truck. So, yeah, it's a pretty neat little process. I kind of wish they were doing some, but they might be later. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if I should put the bird up or not. I just uh, I kind of feel like about an 80% that I shouldn't. I get an inter intertwined with one of them guys and I'm endangering all the lives of those people on the plane, right? So, oh, well, it's okay. No biggie. Wow, I'd be, I'd be really amazed if you could clap your hands. 
<laughs> You're not going in? No. Oh boy. We won't comment on that one. Anyways. Oh yeah, we're going for the camel rides. No, I'm kidding. Ah, nice beautiful lake. Just abruptly being wrecked by the sound of a snowmobile trying to get across. No, no ice, no nothing. It's gonna be awesome. Hopefully they're still going. He's gonna go for a swim. Sweet. Oh, that was starting nice, eh? Holy. A little bit more than your normal engine, I think. So.
<laughs> That's crazy. That's a good place to break down there and fix it, not out on the lake. You <laughs> did. Crazy. I can't go no further. Not out as, uh, whatchamacallit as he is. Crazy, maybe.
heading back to our truck. It's getting on later on in the day. I wanted to, there is another actual grower a little bit from here though, but uh, hopefully maybe we can get there in time. I've never been to that one before. So it'll be kind of interesting, but pretty much everything's the same here this year. Helicopters look like they've stopped for now, but uh, I've actually not uh, had my bird up in the sky. I just didn't feel right about it. So anyways, uh, yeah, see if we can make ourselves to the, uh, to the other place. Oh, deer. Deer. Yeah, there, deer. Deer. Not a John Deere, that was a... What could have been John? Live deer. Oh dear. We're almost at another place here, though. Holy freaking crap, it's the mini event. These are all... minis parked out here. Are you freaking kidding me? Really? Wow. I come up here thinking, oh, wait a minute, there are lots of parking here. Why'd I have to park? Well, we parked. Could have parked down here, but these are all minis in here. Wow. There's actually a mini club, I guess. <laughs> That's kind of weird. But anyways, lots of lots of fields here, but also lots of power lines. Lots of, lots of hydro wires. I don't know if I like that too much. That means some magnetic interference and stuff. So probably not going to get it up here either. That sucks. Well, same dewy deal here, I guess. They're icing their icing their crops. We're gonna have to jump on a tour maybe and see why they're doing that. Check it's, I don't know, it's weird. Very weird. Looks like they're actually doing stuff up there, maybe though. Hmm, interesting. How many miles have you been out yet? We get pretty good fuel mileage. <laughs> the exhaust is pretty bad though. <laughs> Natural gas. <laughs> We are going to change their mind here, aren't we? Welcome everyone, my name is Stacy Miller. I'm a member of the Watcha Mohawks. Welcome to Watcha Territory. We're, uh, we're honored to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Watcha was established in uh, 1881. We actually came from the Oka area. Uh, many of you will remember the uh, Volca Mohawks. Um, that's where our ancestors were from. Um, we all know what kind of issues came from there. And I'll tell you that we were the rebel rousers that couldn't get along with them. Oh. <laughs> so that's, that's how we ended up with a uh, Mohawk territory smack dab in the middle of what is basically Ojibwe country. Uh, Mohawks are traditionally the keepers of the Eastern Gate. Uh, the Eastern Gate being the eastern end of Lake Ontario. So we are sort of an island unto ourselves here. Uh, as in the box. We don't see any other Mohawks around us. So, say, my name is Stacy Miller. Uh, Rob is our driver. So far, Rob has only lost one card in the box this weekend, so, so things are, are pretty good. We got a whole lineup of minis looking to get out of here. Uh, Gold rally or something? Oh, I think it's Carry on. Oh, yeah, I'm going to carry on here. You're going to a different person. I'm, I'm sure I'll figure it out. You don't get her done, brother. So when, when our ancestors came here uh, back in 1881, they found some, uh, some cranberry marshes, uh, wild cranberry marshes here. Uh, of course, uh, we were told uh, when, when we were said that there's some land up here that you guys can It's great farming land. And you can come up and farm in Muskoka. Which you know is great if you want to chip uh, rock away from mm -hmm. a bigger piece of rock. But other than that, not a lot of great farming here. No. And all the people that came up here were farmers. But great. Um, so we found some bogs out here and, and uh, made use of the cranberries. Uh, cranberries in the back in the day were used not just for food; they're also used as medicine. And we also use the dye from the cranberry to brighten fabrics for uh, dress. So uh, we made use of the cranberries and we harvested the cranberries right from the beginning. Um, when we had the fill of cranberries that we needed, 
uh, we would bag the cranberries up and then by horse take the rest of the cranberries into Bala and sell the cranberries into Bala. So that would be uh, the very beginnings of the Iroquois Cranberry Growers uh, Association. But really, we got started on this whole business in 18, sorry, 18, 19, 1969. Uh, and uh, we started with uh, three acres. Um, we now harvest uh, 60 acres. <laughs> 60 acres. And wow. that makes us the largest cranberry growers in Ontario. By no means are we the largest in North America, but we're small potatoes compared to some of the bigger ones. So, as I say, we, we have uh, 68 acres of harvested uh, cranberry lands, and we have 400 acres of focus support that, that farming endeavor. Behind, uh, on my left, so behind some of you here, you'll see a fenced off area there. That's, uh, you see some beehives in there. Uh, that's uh, where the bees, we get four and a half million bees in here in the spring, brought in the spring. And those bees are here to pollinate the plants. You'll notice that there's a fence around the bees. That fence is not, it's electrified. It's not to keep the bees in, but to keep the bears out. Ooh. And uh, we're, for the most part, successful, although this year we did lose one hive to uh, uh, a rather aggressive bear. Hmm. Uh, we do harvest the honey out of the hives. Uh, uh, cranberry honey, and that's sold at the store, which is right in behind me, which all the rest of the stuff is sold there as well. So, you notice we're spraying these uh, these bogs here, the one to my right and, and, and this next to. Uh, what we're doing here is the weather has turned very cold on us, as everybody knows. The cranberries, we don't want them to freeze. So what we do is we spray water on the cranberries. As the water freezes, it loses heat. And as the water loses heat, the heat transfers into the cranberries and coats the cranberries then in ice and saves the cranberries from the cold weather. So these bogs here that you're seeing that we're just spraying water on, they actually are not harvested yet. They're yet to be harvested. Harvest begins in uh, late September, general speaking. It runs through for about uh, a month. We hope to have the harvest. Talk to the, the guy that runs the place today, and uh, he's hoping to have the harvest done by the uh, by the beginning of uh, November. Because once you get into November here, weather turns pretty dicey to be out doing what they're doing. It's dicey today. <laughs> you notice on, on my left, you, you'll see a canal. This is one of the lower canals. The harvesting of cranberries is really about moving water around. So we have some lower canals, we have some higher canals on the other side that we'll see when we when we loop around. So what we do is, is uh, when the cranberries are ready to be harvested this time of year, uh, we fill the bogs with water. This bog is being filled with water. Once the bog is filled with water, they'll probably be working on this bog tomorrow. Then we have a, a picker uh, that, that goes in. And the picker really doesn't pick so much and it, it beats the water, it beats the plant. So what happens is cranberries grow, they're very dense underneath the, the plant. And so when we fill it with water, the cranberries want to rise. So the cranberries come up above the plant. Then the center goes in, beats the water, agitates the water, and the cranberries free from the plant, and the cranberries go down. Then we have some brave soil, we get in the water, and move the cranberries into an area. Intensive, cold, the way they're the living. Yeah. So that's the beater that we see today? Yes. That's, uh, that's drives right in the water. Yep, drives right in the water. Yep. Now it's deep. So this bog was just harvested. They just pulled the cranberries off it about uh, an hour and a half ago. The cranberries so were in a boon like you saw back there into this corner here. Then uh, we have a, a hose that sucks the cranberries and water out into the big drum there. You can see uh, the rest of the drum. When they come up through through the machine, they get washed again. And you can see all that duck around the side there. That's some leaves and twigs and whatnot. And they come down and fall into a, a hopper that's underneath. Which is now they move to the processing plant. On the left hand side, you can see some, some of these huts. You'll see them dotted throughout the place. They all have uh, pumps in them. 
Pumps are about 5,000 gallons a minute. We move a lot of water around here. There's diesel pumps and there are electric pumps. Uh, the electric pumps is what we prefer, obviously. But if we do lose power, because uh, we do have uh, not the greatest power source up here, um, then we've got the diesel pumps because if the weather turns bad and we have to do something, we will flood the berries to protect the berries. Now what I didn't mention uh, when we are coming through, I turned around a little bit, is all the bogs are the same width. Uh, with the exception of this little bog here. This little bog here is uh, our test field. If you look really closely, you'll be able to see some berries. It's kind of hard to spot, but once you see them, then you'll start seeing more of them. So that's, again, we're just protecting that field right now. It hasn't been harvested yet. As I say, the width of the bogs are always the same. The length of the bogs, they can be different depending on how much land we have. The width of the bogs is a certain width so that the machinery will work properly in the box. Hmm. You notice all the box has uh, sprinkler heads on them. The sprinkler heads have uh, piping that runs through them, obviously, to, uh, to get the water into the box. The uh, piping, there's about 10 miles of piping that we use. That piping will be removed in the fall after all the harvesting is done. So, you know, once you've done the cold part of standing in the water to get the berries out, then in mid-November, when it's all nice and sunny and warm here, <laughs> you get to go out and unhook all the water pipes. Oh, and then the water pipes get put back in in the spring. Again, before it gets nice and warm. We don't want anyone to enjoy themselves. <laughs> it's nothing but hard work. So. You're wonderful. Sand. What we do is uh, once once those pipes are all off, then we want it at that point in time to harvest all the cranberries. The pipes are all out. Um, what we're doing now is we have to now protect the plant for the winter. So we fill all the bogs with water again. Again, we're moving water like crazy. Here. So we fill all the bogs with water again and wait for winter to really take control. Because once once that happens, then we start to get ice on top of the box ice on the box. We have a machine here that's much like a snow drummer that you'd see on a ski hill with the wide tracks and whatnot. And we keep the box clear and free from snow. What we're trying to do is create as much ice as possible. Uh, what I, a lot of people don't recognize is ice is a great insulator. Snow is a great insulator. So we want to keep the snow off so that we have thicker and thicker ice pack. Once we get a nice thick ice pack on these bogs, then we pull these gates and the water drains out back here underneath and you're left with plants on the bottom, air, and then a thick pack of ice that sits on top. We want to keep that ice there all winter long. About every four years, three or four years, uh, what we'll do is in the spring before the ice starts to melt, we go out and we put an inch to two inches of sand on the ice. And as the ice melts, the sand trickles down into the plants, and the plants love that because it forces them to grow up through the sand. They like the sandy, loamy, peaty mixture, and so it actually helps with weeds. It helps keep the plants healthy. So we do that about every three or four years. We get all kinds of animals. You know, it's not unusual to see deer out there, uh, moose, uh, the occasional bear scurries across the road here. Uh, the First Nation is uh, pretty much uh, untouched and spoiled, if you will. Uh, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of animals here, some of which are in danger, including a uh, terrible turtle. And, uh, if you drive into reserve anywhere, you're very apt to see signs on the roadway saying turtle crossings, high break for snakes, things like that. Uh, we have Massasauga rattler, we have a big population of Massasauga rattlers here. Of course, they're not around right now, they were smart enough to get somewhere warmer. The rest of us are out here in the cold, they were smart enough to get away. They go to bed. <laughs> 
if you're driving on the 400, or so from the 400, you'll see a fence, about a two-foot fence that runs all through the reserve. Yeah. Uh, that actually is uh, to help stop the turtles from dropping the Oh, is it? That's what it's there for. So I said we'd have a better look at the, uh, at the canals that were higher on this side. So these are the higher canals here. This is the other side we're looking at, the other side of the, uh, the bed that we were looking at earlier, the first bed we went by. So if we want to flood this, just open the, the gates on number 20 there. That floods the water in from this canal and fills up that bed. Then we want to empty it. There's the same gate at the other end. Pull it up, drains into the lower canals down there. And then the water all over and do it again. Yes, the cranberry is growing two years worth of berries at once. So the berries that we're picking this year were pollinated two years ago. Yeah, a year and a half ago. Okay. So the, 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 whatever things we do to the marsh this year won't, won't necessarily, say won't, they don't greatly affect the harvest for this year, they greatly affect the harvest for next year. What happened last year greatly affects the harvest this year. Now, of course, you know, you know, you know, certain things do affect the harvest. But you know, that's what we're actually working on the plants. We're actually working on the plants for next year's harvest. Always a concern. Absolutely. You know, that, the problem that, I mean, we all know the problem that we have with these is a serious problem. Well, some people Yeah. <laughs> Does the honey taste different from the bees? I'm sorry? Does the honey taste different because they're... You know, I, you know Rob, have you had the honey? The cranberry honey? Is I can't hear. Have you had the cranberry honey? No, no. no it's I, not because I, I, I'm not so, uh, sweet. That's not really my I just wonder if it tastes mm. different because of what they're eating. It must, it must. It must it's taste different. It's probably a little, a little different uh, yeah. flavor. It would have that tangy taste, wouldn't it, to it? Yeah, I haven't had it. I'll be yeah, honest with you. I haven't had it, so I don't want to. I don't want to tell you something that's not right. I've had uh, like buckwheat honey. Have you ever had buckwheat? Yeah. There's a different taste in that. The wildflower honey. There's a little bit of a different yeah. taste. I think the cranberry is kind of like a little bit of a different taste. I don't think it's dramatic. Oh man, there's a lot less people on that tour than what we had. Holy. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I can't fly here either. <laughs> I don't like the idea of all these power lines here. Way too much magnetic interference. That's one major thing they tell you in the book to uh, not uh, fly near anything like that. <laughs> so, sorry. Well, I guess that's it. Unless there's super, something super awesome on the way home. Um, I don't know if there will be or not, but we'll see. Uh, that's it for cranberries today. And the snow wheel thing was kind of cool. I think they invented kind of jet skis for that purpose. <laughs> but anyways, pouring all that horsepower just to keep yourself afloat. Anyways, that's, they're fun. Definitely with some kind of nitromethane in them things, though. Holy cow, come out of a can. Like a metal can, so it was something really good that would probably rot through a regular gas can or something, I don't know. But, um, anyways, um, kind of sucks that they were blowing water on everything because it was so cold to keep the berries in a, in case in ice so it doesn't actually get colder than ice and then freeze. So, if it, you know, it'll only stay at like zero degrees, which is okay, but if it gets any more than that, like a minus five or a minus ten, it's going to get really cold. So that's why they spray stuff. So anyways, um, yeah, but uh, we're heading home. I guess that's it. So, uh, and it's late on already. It takes like two and a half hours to get here one way. So we better get at her. Anyways, thanks for watching. If there's anything else cool on the way home, I'll film it. If not, well, we'll take catch you later. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Well, there we are. Nothing awesome happened on the way home, but there we go. Five hours of driving when we actually pulled in here. Um, 376, 377 kilometers, we'll say, and 51 and we'll say a half liters used. So that's our average there was, average wasn't great, but I was kind of booting her pretty hard on the major highway, like 130 kilometers an hour. So booting her pretty hard. Um, not too bad, I guess so, but uh, that little trip cost us, well, 51.3 liters times a dollar 13, I think that fuel was. So, uh, my brain is really not working too good for that right now. So, I can't even remember if that was the actual price, but let's say it was a dollar 13 
times 50. I'm going to put 52 liters. So it costs us just under $60 to drive that. So that's not too bad. 376K. Man, it's not too bad. But I was booting it, not getting super great gas mileage, I guess. Oh well.